Uh, hello and uh, welcome back everyone. So in the previous set of videos, we were talking about REST APIs, how to write the REST APIs, how to connect to MongoDB database, and how to write a simple MongoDB model and how to write a REST APIs on top of that. Because this is a crash course, so I'm not covering in depth all these aspects. There is uh, already advanced tutorial series available on my channel. There you can have a look. So let's finish up this particular uh, course and where let's add more APIs to this particular controller and services. So create user we are done. Uh, we have get users then get user by email ID. Similarly, we can have delete user also. Delete user will just remove the user from the database. So here we already have this method and we are passing this ID. So doing the same thing, find one right here we can, what we can do is there is method provided by mongoose which is find one and remove, right? And what it do is you can just pass the email. So what it will do is it will find that email ID in the user record and it will just remove it and it will return that. Okay. So what we are doing is in from the controller we are calling this and if uh, we got the promise successful it means uh, data removed successfully or let's call it a because we are talking about user entity user fetched successfully user created successfully so here we are getting users here we are creating users so same thing you can do if you want is create user, get users, get user by email, delete users, other attributes you can also do like filter user and you can define the routes for that. Simple if you just wanted to customize your get then we can do that. So instead of this we have a filter and here we are actually passing filter by email right and we are passing true so what we are trying to do is just give me the list uh, based on the sorted sorting based on the e email or doing filtering and sorting you can just pass the query parameter so this is called as a request parameter this is called as a query parameter and how to get the query parameter and request parameter kind of same here we are doing uh, request dot params there we will be just doing request.query right here we can write one method filter users and here request.query request.query will give an object and we are actually trying to get the email out of it you can actually parse it to a boolean because all the argument we are getting that is a string right so what we can just do is const flag equal to but boolean for string will always be true so here we have to just check if it is coming out as a true then we have to return true then you don't need to parse it so whatever we are getting uh, we can convert it and the flag we are passing to this controller method and what it is doing filter user by email that we can define in our service and we are getting email right now what we need to do is we just need to return the data in the ascending descending whatever the way you want right so you can also have another query parameter which is like ascending or descending right ascending true or you can you don't specify any argument so ascending is true and do the filtering based on the email in the ascending order 
okay so here in the services we are getting email now what we can do is initially what we do is we get all the list of data okay either you just get this data resolve the promise here and do the filtering right here otherwise you can also in query also you can specify the ascending and descending order for a particular email so this email we are not trying to get get user by email what we are saying is that give us the ascending and descending order based on the email attribute right so here in the find query so you can see we are actually passing the conditions this is these are the conditions right so in this object you can specify whatever you want like where condition or ascending descending order sorting searching all can be applied in the find query if we just look at the find query this is a document query and in the document query we should be able to see all the things like where clause batch size error box here collections comments and count right we can also fix the count and this is the criteria filter criteria which is saying okay based on this particular condition i want these many set of results only okay that all the things we can put that in the sorting here i just wanted to talk about how you can extract the data from the query parameter okay so we have created the basic set of apis now we can also enhance it with the help of async await i mean currently we are writing promises right so instead of that can we just improve it a little bit uh, in controllers we can just use we can just convert all these methods as async methods right and what we can do is simply await and get the data i will show simple one example const data we are getting from the await service dot create user and these are all async functions and these are returning a promise right and in the controller we are uh, doing await and we are getting this data back create user data and here we can set same thing response dot status 200 and data if you are using the async await then always try to wrap it in the try catch because there can be exception thrown from your service If you got any error, then you can just say status is 500 and I got this error. Right? This is plain and simple. Same thing you can do for all the other methods, just make them async and then you can just write. So, this is the analogy of async await that you can do things in a single line. Okay? Here we are actually doing get user. So, we can just replace this code with this. I mean the whole code itself we just make this method as async right and what we are returning we are not returning anything we are just sending response dot status this is async method and create user will be async now and this is returning promise so that is fine for us so async await right so this is how you can manage user created successfully so there are many ways of writing uh, these kind of APIs. You can use promises, you can use async await. Uh, Mongoose also support the callback way of uh, dealing with these things, but we can use this async await that, that is more better way of writing it. So whatever is happening here, that is fine. So if you get any data user created successfully, user data captured successfully, then that is fine. If we are getting any exception, then we can also check it in the error handler so if you want some advanced level of uh, handling the error codes then what you can do is don't decide what status code you wanted to return in you can just set next error and you have to create one global middleware which will take care of what exceptions we are being thrown from here so create user right so this create user can throw any kind of exceptions like user not found or duplicate data exceptions and all so all those exceptions will be thrown to our another layer which is like a middleware layer where, where it will decide what need to be done 
to this exception so we can create that okay so these are just a very basic understanding and this is kind of a crash course you don't need to look into much you can what you can do is you can just write some more schema model same as user you can create a product user cart right different different collections similarly yeah, you can create a cart database and inside models okay this will be a cart schema model and this is pointing to the cart model schema and in shopping cart you can see the items item counts so that is of type number then information i mean total count and payment which is also of type number so how many items you have and also you can have a category which is of type string right these kind of schema models you can create and you can just write basic rest apis now for cart what you can do you can create your own set of apis currently the database is not connected that's why it is throwing error to make it more clear what we can do is we can have another layer here in the routes which can be a user.js and cart.js okay so we have index.js we'll just copy and paste it and we'll try to split things so this is for cart so I will just use this and I will write a basic APIs for it so we can have a cart controller instead of app controller and this one is for user right so I in the index.js I will be importing this user and cart and here I will be deciding the base path for both the routes so router.use when it is coming to the user then send it to user route whenever it is coming to the cart so now we have just created one parent layer nothing else okay here we don't need controller stuff here we can just say const user route sorry this should be cart route in that case Similarly, we can create a user route. So for user, we are pointing to the user route. For cart, we are pointing to the cart routes. That is fine and we are exporting the router. Now whenever the request is coming for the user, we are taking it to the user routes. And there we don't need to prefix everything with the user. We can just set it to email, filter, right? This is helpful. Correct. Even you can just combine all these things together. You don't need to write router.get every time. For a single URL, you can split, you can write everything in a chain way. I mean, in, in particular chain. So first of all, there is a get. For a same URL you have written post, for same URL you have written put. Right, so all these things can be chained together. Then we have another is a delete and get, right? So this can also be chained together. Then we have filter is totally different. So this can't be chained here, right? It's a nice and clean way of writing it. Now same thing we can do for the cart. Here cart is already prefixed, so we can just do this. Here we can create a cart controller dot get cart items. Similarly, you can keep adding and enhancing this particular project and create your own backend system. It is generated from the Express CLI, so it is kind of very basic. I'm not using any external library or doing anything out of the box. We are using the same cookie parser, body parser, basic logger and Express to write the REST APIs. Okay, and these are just a common error handler we have, which are just returning the status code. If the environment is development, it will just return the status code. Whenever the error comes to this middleware, 
okay so this is all uh, this is the last video of this crash course uh, if you wanted to learn more advanced so there is already advanced topics covered on my youtube channel and please like share and subscribe i have already started uh, one nest js playlist which is talking about giving a proper modular structure of your apis in nest js nest js is a typescript javascript i mean written in typescript and you can write you don't need to struggle with express and typescript you can just go ahead and write your apis with nest js nest js code look like same as what we have seen in the angular angular modules we have a we are writing services controllers modules injecting one module into another so that gives us a well defined structure but before understanding the nest js or any other framework in node js you should have a basic understanding how express works what are the status code how to respond to the client how to deal with the middleware how to write the rest apis how the express router works how to render the template from the express either it is a egs jad or handlebar